Hello, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel, and I hope today finds you in blessed health and in good spirits. Um, today, I wanted to share a video I received because many of us take read the, the ability to read and write for granted. And um, I'm not quite sure how many of you saw the video that I did on the 30th of March last year. I'll put the link below where I asked whether or not the Home Office or any government um, office should have compassion on people who can't read and write. And I'm going to show you this video um, that I received today. Morning, y'all. So the other day I had this experience. It was a learning experience for me. Um, I was at this government office just waiting on my documents to come back to me. I already went through the process and just waiting on the document to leave. And this gentleman came up to me. He was, you know, dressed and in his jeans and a shirt and clean and everything. But he had this defeated, doubtful look on his face when he came up to me, which you know, for a second kind of made me want to just step back. He said to me, Miss, you can help me sign up this form. And for about five seconds, it's like a man saying to me, No, 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 because you don't know what this man... Sorry about the noise. You don't know this man and you don't know you can't trust people nowadays. For five seconds, that just like flash through my mind. And... Yes, I'm parked right out on a highway. Um, and I said to him, I said, like, this kid God spoke to me, and I said to him, I said to him, um, come on, let's let's sit on and get this thing done. So I sat with him, we filled out the form, and when I asked him for his TRN number to put on the form, he didn't have his TRN. I realized that he just went and did the paper, and got the paper so he gave me the paper and we sat and we filled it up and did what what needed was to be done um after filling out the form and i gave the form to him i noticed that his eyes were very red like he wanted to cry and him looked for me and him said to me say them just shame me in the so well ago you know I'm so why come I can't read. And I'm like, listen to me. Slavery wasn't so long ago. Right? And a lot of people are still living in the harsh reality of illiteracy. A whole heap of work with grandparents and great grandparents did have to work for a farm. Still I work for a farm. Some of we have to come come work for a farm. Just the same, you know? A lot of us are so naive to other people's reality because we just live in this bubble that we can't show no human empathy to anybody else. I mean, this is a government office that should cater for people who are, you know, like him. They should be willing and it's the human thing to do to be kind to other people. And when I went in the office with him to present the paper, everybody was laughing. And it made me quite upset. It made me so upset that when I got in my car, I wanted to cry because I was like, in this day and age, people still laughing at people because they can't read. This man is 34 years old. And you don't know his background. You don't know if, if, he, if he lost parents when he was very young and didn't have the, the resources to go to school. You don't know if he's a street child. And this man is making steps towards making progress in his life. We sometimes are our own worst enemy because we bring down each other too much. We need to learn to uplift and to strengthen each other. He's making positive moves. He's going about getting his ID, his driver's license, whatever it was. 
I won't say, right? But he is trying to do something for himself. A lot of people out there, they're sitting and they're in a state where they have to be begging or them just waiting and hand out. This is a young man where I try to go get a little work and try to start out in paper and I try to do something. We need to stop belittle people because these are the same people tomorrow later on in life that is going to may become um, and be a help to some of us and everybody out there we see a drive benz bima Audi, cadillac whatever you may call it or your definition of being rich because some of us are so taken up with materialistic things that we can't do nothing for other people we measure people based on what we think they are socially, you know, social, socioeconomic rank. And then something that we need to stop, it, it, it really bother me for a really long time. I'm a really officiary. We need to change as a nation. We need to help each other more. You never know the unexpected blessings that come from just being kind and being loving to other people. This young man was in tears when I was finished, just simply helping him to write a letter. And I said to him, I said, I said to him, I said to him, um, you know, life is hard, but it will get easier. Just keep moving forward. Never stop trying. We need to stop putting each other down. All right. We need to look at each and every life as valuable. Right. Need okay, so um yeah, I thought I would share that with you because like I said, you know, um she said he was going to get his TRN numbers. For those of you who do not know what a TRN number is, in Jamaica it's a tax registration number. So whatever he was trying to do, it was just as well he had the courage to ask that young lady to help him. Some people, they don't have that courage to ask for help and they go around and they end up doing things that they shouldn't be doing. We do not know why people commit crimes, but it could be for something as simple as that. They have too much pride to ask for help and they just continue and with all these documents that they need and they can't fill them up and they just feel defeated. Um, yeah, I ask you to look at the video um, that I'm going to put in the link below so you can understand where, you know, how I empathise with that young lady, empathising with the young man. And like I said, I remember when I was in America, I was dating this guy for like five years and it wasn't until I was sick one day and I was lying on the couch and I didn't have my glasses on or my contact lenses in. And I said to him, you know, can you read those subtitles? Because it wasn't in English. And he sat there as though he wasn't listening. And I said, so-and-so, can you um, just read the subtitles before they disappear? And it wasn't until that point, I didn't know he couldn't read all right. It didn't even occur to me. So when she's saying you see people driving around in um, the Benz and the Cadillac, how do you know they can read and write? You don't know. You don't know who can read and write because sometimes it's not until you're pressed that it becomes an issue. And like in that man's um, particular instant, it became an issue. The same way that they're changing up the systems where everybody has to do stuff online is the same problems that not only people who are illiterate, but the elderly are going to face who are not um, IT literate and who do not understand online situations. I mean, it is people do have to learn for themselves. It's not good to depend on other people all the time because in an IT situation, when you're having to do things online, these are things you have to learn to do all, all by yourself. And you can get somebody to show you how to do it. That is the first step ask people to show you you're not expected to know just off the bat but if you want to learn like for example if you can't read and write they have tv um not tv youtube programs and they 
for adults and it gives you the basic um, ways to read and write and you can do that even in the privacy of your own home in the privacy of your own room nobody needs to know so you know there is an answer to people who are illiterate and I'm glad he fell upon that lady um, I wish she had said something to those people I wish what she had said in the video she had actually said to those officials that were in there because like I said when people go into um, that kind of situation and they're asked um, they're asked to fill up forms and do this and that and they don't know how to do it they feel embarrassed but they mustn't feel embarrassed they need to be able to say to those officials excuse me can you help me please I can't read and write they are aware they are aware of people who cannot read and write. But the thing is, you can't always hide behind people. If you try to get people to do things for you all the time, you'll never be able to do something for yourself. So it is important, especially um, when you're going to these government. I mean, in Jamaica, and the, those people who are made fun of him, they're, they're idiot. You know what I mean? They don't have no sense. But there'll always be somebody who does have sense. You know, then always, all you've got to do is say, send me someone who can help me. And they will. The same way he came out of that building and he was able to ask that young lady. He could have felt too embarrassed because look, oh, girl, look nice. He could have felt embarrassed to ask her. But he owned up to it and she was able to have empathy and help him to fill up the form. So um, I just want, I just had to share that with you because yes, even in this day and age, 2020, there are adults who cannot read and write and we should not take it for granted that they can. If you find out that they can't, you can just help them or you can direct them. I always believe if you teach a man how to fish, he'll have food for the rest of his life. So it's not a question of you doing all the work for them and enabling them in their in their illiteracy but it's about pointing them in the right direction so that they can do things for themselves and like I said for any of you out there who cannot read and write there are YouTube videos but then again how do you um, get the YouTube videos in the first place if you can't read and write well Google has this voice recognition so you can just say adults learn how to read and write and it will pop up so there's no excuse really so i hope this is helpful and i hope that many of you will like you say um lend a helping hand we all have our areas of expertise you know we might be able to read and write but we might not be able to lay a bridge we might might not be able to lay a railway line you know what i mean that doesn't mean you know we should be laughed at and just because you know something and I don't know it, it doesn't mean you laugh and scorn at me just because I don't know something and you do. And that's the thing. It is about, you know, if somebody asks you a question and you have the answer, you just answer them. You don't have to scorn somebody and laugh at them because they don't know what you know. And people do that. And it's not necessary. Each one teaches one. Anyway. That's my, that's all I've got to say for now. Bye-bye.